sometimes I think I'm a funny old human. I take everything in my stride. Not a lot phases me. The proverbial hits the fan. You've got to be able to get your hands dirty and figure stuff out. Because how you talk to your customers can make you or break you really quickly. Welcome to Add to Cart, Australia's leading e-commerce podcast that express delivers all you need to know in the fast-moving world of online retail. Every week, Nathan Bush from eSuite and an e-commerce industry expert will share the news, research and insights that you need to know to keep you at the top of your game. And of course, keep your customers adding to cart. Hello and welcome to Add to Cart. My name is Nathan Bush, host of Add to Cart and director at e-commerce talent agency eSuite. Today's guest needs absolutely no introduction. She is like the Kate Middleton of Australian e-commerce. She's royalty, especially after placing as the number one person in e-commerce multiple times, including last year, and she recently sold her vegan, ethically sourced, cruelty-free and low-impact e-commerce business, Flora and Fauna, to BWX earlier this year. Julie Mathers is the managing director of both Flora and Fauna and Nourished Life. She's also on multiple retail boards and advisories, including the National Retail Association, Australia Post, and National Online Retailers Association. Nothing like selling your business and then doubling your responsibilities, right? In this conversation, we cover the flora and fauna story to date, including how Julie took a Photoshop course to create the first flora and fauna website, to now how Julie felt when she handed her business baby over to BWX. We also cover things such as the power of words in retail communication, why retailers are fighting over unit load devices or ULDs, which is something I learned, and Julie's advice for any founders who are considering external funding or acquisition. And in true e-commerce lockdown style, we had a few internet issues, which impacted the audio at a few small points, but most of it is okay. But there's so much gold from Julie, it's worth the little glitches. So hang on. So thanks to our partners, Shopify Plus and Signet, here's our conversation with Julie Mathers from Flora and Fauna and Nourish Life and BWX. Julie Mathers, welcome to Ad to Cart. (gasps) Thank you, Nathan, for having me. Absolutely delighted to be here. It's been a long time coming. It's um, I've had you in my sights for a long time, but especially when you <laughs> were ranked number one in top people in e-commerce, I was like, oh, I've got, I've got to get Julie on the show. It's got to happen. Um, so <laughs> congratulations. And now that's coming up again. Are you gonna, are you gonna go for it? Are you gonna defend your title? Ah, uh, I, 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 I'm in two minds. I mean, I'm someone who will always give things a go, but at the same point, point, you get out when you're, you know. Get out at your peak. Like, oh. so I'm a big Formula One fan, right? Michael Schumacher, amazing. He got out at his peak and then he came back and he just didn't do very well. So do I get out? I don't know. No, I'll probably go in again. I don't so, know. so you're terrified of becoming <laughs> number two because you don't want to go number one, then number two, and they're like, oh, what happened no, to I Julie this though. year? I did that, though. So 2019, oh, my gosh, this podcast is going to be about this, isn't it? My, my, <laughs> 2019, I was number one. But I couldn't pick it up because I just had Woody. I was in hospital with Woody. So I'd literally like two days before I had Woody. So I was number one then in 2019. Then in 2020, I was number two. And then I got number one back again in 2021. Yeah, but that's like, that's like, it's probably a bad way of phrasing it, but that's like getting Schumacher, like beating Schumacher when he's got an injury. I know. See, they exactly. got you. They, they pipped you when you, you, you were kind yeah. of preoccupied and then you're just like, no, 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 it's mine. That's, that's where I belong. It's mine. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. But now I feel like, oh, do I want that? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It's a given. You're going for it. I know it. Um, <laughs> all right. So, so much has happened since we last talked. We, we, we talked a couple of years ago at a Shopify meetup. And a lot has happened, but most notably, congratulations on on selling Flora and Fauna to BWX earlier this year. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that was, gosh, what a journey we've been on, hey? I was actually saying to my husband the other day, so I had my second baby, Alfie. Nearly said Woody then. Gosh, don't even remember (laughs) what they're called. Um, Second baby, Alfie, in May last year. And I I barely recall what he was like as a newborn. (laughs) Like, I really, it's it's just all a bit hazy because so much has gone on. 
And in September last year, so we knew to get Flora and Fauna to the next stage, we needed help because we'd been completely self-funded from day dot. And we knew that all the things that we had in mind, we, we just needed a bit of outside help. So initially went out to go and look for the e funding and we had um, a sort of few offers around that. And, and then BWX, Dave from BWX came and said, Oi, <laughs> have you thought about us? And we hadn't really considered because we didn't want to initially go and sell the whole thing. We were just looking for a minority stake, really. And then it was just talking to Dave. It was kind of a really sensible and obvious move. And when he said to me, actually, do you want to come and run Florent Fauna and Nourish Life? And I was like, well, that's a cool opportunity to grow something really huge in this industry. Yeah. And for me, me being forever the retailer, and I love a challenge. Like, I'm not very good at sitting still. I'm not sure I'll ever be able to retire ever. And so to get something else, which is a really great challenge, and to really, really, really drive change in this industry, that was just too great and too exciting for me. So, yeah, and now we're really here. <laughs> was it always your intention when you started Flora and Fauna that at one point you'll be bought out or acquired or invested in? Yeah, I, I always thought, I kind of think when you start a business, you you do it for a few reasons. You kind of, you, you need to have a an end goal of some description, which could be, I want to run this business forever and it's going to be handed over to my children or so on and so forth or whatever. That is absolutely a goal. Or, you know, I don't think anyone's ever got a goal of going, hey, I want to run this business and at some point I'll close it. Um, so for me, it was, about growing the business. And then I thought at some point, yeah, we'll exit in some fashion. Um, so that was definitely on my mind. And it was more a question of when that was going to happen and also making sure it was done in the right way. Um, and I think what we've got now is I still, I'm still running Flora and Fauna. So I just now have a really good big backer. <laughs> and that's how I view it. That's how I view it. Because I'm also not someone who's fussed about things. Mm. So the fact that someone else owns it versus me, I never look at it. I, I just don't even look at it like that. It's amazing. I still kind of feel it's, it's well, and Dave has completely empowered me to run, to run the thing. Like yeah. he's like, no, no, you know what you're doing. I'm not going to come and tell you what to do. <laughs> we didn't buy this so that you could step away and not do anything. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Exactly. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Just do more. <laughs> yeah, just do more. <laughs> Welcome to corporate. Um, no. Yeah. Um, if, if, you were, if you think back to like when you started this in 2014 and someone said to you that you'll build it into this incredible thing and sell it in, what, eight years' time? How do you think you would have reacted? Seven. 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 Um, how would I have reacted? I don't, you know what? I'd have probably... Sometimes I think I'm a funny old human because sort of I take everything in my stride. Not a lot phases me, so I think I'd have probably gone, yeah, okay, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll. I'm quite a big believer in myself without being arrogant, but I I do think that I can sort of get things done and get to certain places. So I I know when I started and I sized the market up, and I didn't think that we'd get to the size we have at all because at the time that was back in 2014 at the time the market in this particular space wasn't that big or people people were really weren't shopping consciously at all mm. and that has absolutely shifted in the last last six seven years yeah i suppose i suppose i look at it now and if someone said to me oh gosh if you know you're going to build this amazing business and you're going to sell it again in five years time for x amount i'll go oh okay <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, but, I don't know and it's it's just there's not a lot I, t I don't tend to plan that far into the future yeah. and and I very much take things in my stride and as they come and I'm very practical and pragmatic about stuff. It's funny that you say you don't plan into the future though because you had incredible foresight there into yeah. like around sustainability obviously but also e-commerce like even back then I know it's not, mm. you know it's not decades ago but it's still e-commerce isn't what e-commerce is today. No, definitely not. Definitely. Not. Oh my gosh! If you go onto it, this is the awesome website <laughs> where you can look back at websites yeah. from years gone by. And um, yeah, if you put in flora and fauna, like when we started our, our website, it's, it's atrocious. But um, but it's also I cherish it, mm. and I'm really proud of what we started with because we started that that on the back of the fact packet, and we spent I think maybe a couple of grand on it was a big commerce store at the time, and that's before big commerce were had kind of made their resurgence back here 
And I took myself on a Photoshop course, which cost me 200 bucks, just so that I could learn enough to do banners. But that, but, but the, because we couldn't afford to hire anyone. Yeah. And that's how we started. And, and yeah, e-commerce is, has moved on significantly. Well, in that time, we've got Afterpay. Afterpay, Klarna, ZipPay, blah, blah, blah. All of those payment methods have moved on. Shipping methods have moved on. Same-day mm-hmm. delivery is now becoming more common. And then in terms of just being able to navigate, search, all of the stuff that just the user experience on site, on websites, customers demand more, yeah. and we have to deliver to that. So, yeah, it's, it's moved on significantly in that time. EcoClick is an environmentally friendly, cruelty-free and Australian-made cosmetics brand. They only use the highest quality, cleanest ingredients, and this extends to their packaging. EcoClick uses Signet's Giami Xbox Mini as an alternative to bubble wrap to ensure that they are 100% environmentally friendly and beautifully presented for customers. Signet packaging, a little raffia tape, and a nice sprig of lavender. Perfection. Signet have over 5,500 packaging solutions that help leading e-commerce retailers like EcoClick step up their packaging game. Visit signet.net.au to find out more. That's signet.net.au. Did you build that first big commerce website yourself? Yeah, I did. (laughs) And you know what? I did, I did, and I absolutely love doing that. I, I'm such a big believer in getting your hands dirty. So whenever I email someone, uh, sorry, interview someone, um, I always make sure that they're a doer. And if I'm not very good with people who are sort of not doers, if the proverbial hits the fan, you've got to be able to get your hands dirty and figure stuff out. And a, a great example is is <laughs> New Year's Eve this last year. <laughs> New Year's Eve this last year. Not that anyone was having an amazing New Year, right? But Tom and I were sat at home and anyway, something had happened that day and basically all the products disappeared off the website. And it's about 11.45 at night. And, um, and luckily I'm not going to, I'm not going to name, name any systems or tools because it really wasn't anyone's fault. Um, but anyway, we managed to get hold of someone because I'm going, there must be someone who can help us with this. And we managed to sort it out. But that is the reality of it as well. And it's not, this is not an industry where you can just turn off at five and be gone. Yeah. You're on, you're on constantly, but that's part of the fun too. So when you're now managing a much bigger portfolio Mm -hmm. and I'm imagining a bigger team, what, where do you allow yourself to get hands on and in the detail now? Yeah, it's, it's various bits. So yeah, I've, I've had to sort of adapt a little bit for me and we've had to plug some, we've had to put some roles into FNF to basically get me out of the detail. <laughs> that would <laughs> kick you out. Pretty much. And it's been great. We've had some the, not like phenomenal people. The Florence Water team is phenomenal. And so I've been happily kicked out actually because they're, they're really good at what they do. And in fact, isn't it, you know, the phrase surround yourself with smarter people than you. We have some really good people who are very smart and doing more than I could ever do. So, so that is the, the ideal place. So really where, where I am doing, what I'm doing now, which is what I should be doing, it's the expertise around the industry, the brand, and it's the foresight and the vision and the strategy. And it's, the, you know, what we were just talking about before around the ambassador stuff. It's that stuff where I add value. And it's across both both businesses, but also at a higher level than that as well. But just this is just about where are we going as an industry and as a business. So it's actually a really interesting time for me as well mm-hmm. because it's quite exciting for me because I do want to. I actually do want to step out of the week. Yeah, I kind of like stepping back in every now and then, but it's not a great use of my time. So to bring others in on the conversation that we were having before we jumped in, you said yeah. that you still sign off on every piece of communication that comes out. From yes. Florida. Why do you do that to yourself? I do, I do, I do. Because I think it's really important that the one of the most important things to us is our brand. And it is communication. It's how you talk to your customers. Because how you talk to your customers can make you or break you really quickly. And Flora Fauna is hugely built on community. We have a very passionate community that we love and cherish. And so we can't take that lightly. And 
I suppose one of the challenges for me is I've got seven years of history with Flora and Fauna. And so a lot of the brand sits pretty much internally within me. For me, it's very important. It doesn't take me that long either, but it's very important. I do check all communication because words can, it can be, it can be the smallest thing. It can be a word that can provoke. Yeah. And we have to be very, very careful about that. So yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty focused and obsessed about that stuff. I do remember that when I was at Coles, I'm pretty sure the marketing director when I was at Coles, he used to sign off on every piece of comms as well. Yeah. So it depends. I think it depends. And I could be regarded as a bit OCD in this, but equally, our brand is our most precious thing. It's super precious. Actually, mm. our customers are our, our customers are our most precious thing, and we cannot abuse or, or mistreat our customers in any way. Yeah. So, yeah, I love I love what you said there around words being really powerful. And, and when you're mm. reviewing communication that's going out to your customers and making sure that it's offering value, and then also getting your brand across in the best light. What are you really looking out for in terms of words? Like what are some of the warning signs that you look out for? Oh, yeah. So, well, I always think it comes down to your values, right? And it depends business to business. So we have eight values at FNF. They're all about being positive, fun, kind, non-judgmental. Those are really things. Those are the things that are very important to us. Nourish Life has a different set of values. So... It's about using words that meet those, your own set of values. So as an example, Florent Fauna is a vegan business. So we're very passionate about animals, about the environment, about humans. That's our sort of little strap line is kind to the planet, people and animals. If you look at PETA, P-E-T-A, they're also really passionate about animals too. But we come at it from two very different angles. And a post that's on there... Instagram, because I saw one before and I actually find it very difficult to read them because they they come at it from a completely different angle. We would, a post that's on their um, Twitter or Insta or Facebook would never, ever, ever be on Flora and Fauna's. And we just come at it from different ways because theirs are like, oh, they, they are mm. super confronting. And it comes down to purpose. Our purpose is to help everyone make better choices. Everyone everyone non-judgmental and we have to do that in a really positive fun non-judgmental way so we look out so so that's what i'm looking for this is why i think values are so so important to a business and they should be instrumental in they should just be part of they're part of my dna and they should be part of any anyone's dna who works with us as a business and i've worked at too many businesses where they go here's our values and stick them on a piece of paper and then just put them in a drawer and no one ever looks at them right if you're um, really lucky, they'll get them put like on a sticker and put them up on a yeah. wall, like in a hallway you have to walk past every day. Yeah, and if you're really lucky, you'll get a mouse mat with them on. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, yeah, and that, and that's the thing. And it's it's for us, we have them on a billboard in the office, but it's more than that. We just talk about them in everyday language, everyday language, and if if we go through posts or emails or whatever else and I change the language on anything, I'll tell the team why and we talk through it. Well, most of the time we just talk through them together. So then mm. we, I can say, let's not use that word. It's not very positive or inclusive or whatever it is. And it, and it doesn't necessarily even need to be words. It could just be the way we phrased something. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. It's a really great example of how to use values in your business that actually means something when you're using them to guide mm. decisions and changes and feedback you, where you're actually referring back to them is really nice. How did you come up with those values? Was it a collaborative thing or was it straight out of Julie's head? Yeah, no, it, it was a collaborative thing actually. Um, I mean, most of them have been driven from me, let's face yeah. it. But <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it was collaborative, uh, was it? Yeah. It was collaborative um, and I was leading the collaboration. Yeah, it was yeah. collaborative with myself. I'm definitely yeah. agreed with what I said. Um, <laughs> I, th- I think just over the years. So, so when we started, we started off as a cruelty-free beauty store. And what we were about, our mission when we started was to give people a place where they could shop cruelty-free beauty, not test on animals. And that was it. That was kind of our mission. That, that's what we did. But you change and you have to, I think as a business, as you grow, you have to be flexible to change over the years because where we are now is very different to where we started, actually. And you have to listen to your customers and you have to 
have foresight into the future and listen to your environment and so on and so forth. And we've kind of grown into our purpose. So we very much grew into our purpose. And I can remember having a really good chat. So we used to work a lot closer with Facebook actually than we do now, but and I used to get invited to a lot more than I do now. Hence Facebook, if you listen what to this. You, but, what, have you, what have you said to them about them in the press um, lately? I don't know, probably a lot actually, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I remember going to, I used to sit on the small business council for Facebook, which was really good. And we went to dinner once and there was this great guy that was over from the States and he was a massive brand builder. And I plonked myself as everyone else was on the, on, on the schooners. I, I, plonk, I, I just value, I think when you run your own business, you value every interaction is very, very important to your business. So I plonked myself down next to him and we just started talking about Flung Flung and he actually, that dinner there, he actually really helped me in my mind focus what our purpose was at FNF. So he he was he was brilliantly helpful at, at helping. And from that, that's where I went. That's our like I took took what he suggested away and I got it into a purpose. And from that, I really pulled out all of our values and our val- and it's what we're about. And it was very much we'd already been operating, so it was a lot clearer to identify what our values are because it was stuff we were already doing was there anything specific from that conversation that that's kind of stuck with you it's the word um i think it might have been the word everyone that's that was the thing that helped me help me clarify my thinking and what we're trying to do yeah because it takes a long time i i it's one of the, the things that it took me a really long time to just consolidate who we were and to really kind of condense that into a few words and for ages if people said to me oh, what, what do you do I'll go well we're kind of a store and we sell stuff and then it's all vegan but then we also we sell the beauty but then we sell this and then we'll sell things and I'll take the effort to describe it and everyone's like what do you do <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's it, you can never spend too much time thinking about this stuff mm. but then when you've got it run with it yeah so one of those things that is so funny is that that word everyone isn't an uncommon word. It's not a special word, yeah. but then when you put it, everyone against flora and fauna and how you guys communicate, all of a sudden you go, Oh yeah, of course it makes yeah. total yeah. sense. So that's the power of words, right? It's power of words, power of words. And it's really helps your thinking because then you are suddenly going, well, no, we are helping everyone. It's, and we're not judgmental and we're helping everyone make better choices. We're not saying they're the ultimate best because the ultimate best choice is that really none of us are shopping for anything really. And we're all growing veggies in our gardens and, you know, it's, and we're doing local stuff and, but we're helping people, we're helping everyone make better choices. It's, um, yeah, that's what, that's what we're about. Awesome. (laughs) Now you mentioned your time at Coles, but you were Mm. previously at Masters and APG. So you uh, did your time in corporate land before starting (laughs) Flora and Fauna, which I think a lot of people struggle with, if I'm honest, as everyone wants to jump into their startup or their own thing. But I, I mean, yeah. I had a similar experience or super retail group before starting my yeah. own thing. And, I, and for me, it really helped position what I want this to be and what I don't want it to be at the same time. What yeah. did you take from your corporate experience that you brought into Flora and Fauna? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I Corporate has its pros and its cons, right? But I would not have done what I'd done without having had that experience at all and and I and I took so much it actually you know when I started FNF it took me a little bit of time actually to adapt my thinking away from corporate because I think I was so used to just going uh, uh, what I what I used to do is I'd almost put boundaries and barriers up from up I'd already put them in place and I think that's part of part of the problem with corporate and I'm, I'm being so generalist here, but part of the problem is there are so many processes and there's so much processes, so much red tape in place that half the time, and I'd worked, worked for someone else for such a long time, that you put barriers up yourself because you go, oh, I won't bother asking about that because it won't get across. And I had to lose that. And it took me a little while to, to do that. And even from posting on social media, I had to think about, because having worked at Coles and Masters, you know, you you your posts are very considered mm. and if corporate affairs get involved, you know, all that <laughs> yes. kind of stuff, Jesus. <laughs> and it took me a while to shake that and to go, actually you can talk in a very different tone of voice and that's okay. Mm. So it took me a little while to kind of shake it off, but 
what I did learn is, oh my gosh, I learned so much just in terms of being able to run a business and actually that trading element. Like I'm such a big trader. I love trading and I love retail. And I, I started off my retail career at uh, John Lewis on their graduate scheme in the UK. Jeez, I love that store. That's right. And, and I think ev- I've learned something from every single business I've been in, whether it's John Lewis with customer experience, because that's what they're exceptional at. And I took that from day dot. And the fact that I can remember from then is if someone works in, walks into your department, you, you greet them. It's like head up. Do not have your head behind the counter. Nothing, no admin should be on the shop floor. It's stuff like that that sticks with me today yeah. in terms of your customers, the most important person, like greet your customers, talk to your customers. And it's that kind of stuff, which you completely translate to digital as well. It's like have the best experience. Like don't try and make, don't make it hard for them to find out what they want to find. Yeah. So there's stuff like that. There's even basic stuff like consumer law. Like just know your consumer law. And that, that's probably the thing that irritates me most actually about a lot of businesses that start. They aren't clued up on consumer law. And I see it being flouted all the time. And it's one of those, it gets my goat. I'm, I'm just there going. <laughs> like, <laughs> is that your goat like, impression? Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what, parts, what parts of consumer law um, do you see flouted most, most regularly? <laughs> I was going to be really inappropriate then. And then I caught myself and won't. But <laughs> discount, discounting, discounting, you know, set prices. Don't fudge prices some large online retailers who do that. I don't know, but you know, you can't inflate prices and then discount them and you can't do that stuff. And it, I think for me, it, I find it very difficult from a values perspective because it's, it's everything that we don't stand for. And one of our values is to be authentic and that stuff is just not authentic. So, um, so yeah, I see that happening all the time or a product arrives in we haven't um you know retailers don't establish the price for 28 days and then discount you know stuff like that yeah (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. but that's but that's been really helpful for me having worked at Woolies and Coles Uh, actually one of the other things as well is just managing a team Mm. it's it's really simple things like actually having managed a team and putting KPIs in place and yeah just bringing in some of that more rigorous structure that you should have in any business. Yeah. And probably one of the best things actually was, and Tom and I were very focused on this from the start, was making sure that we put the best systems and processes in place. And even though the systems might be a little bit too big for us where we were at the time, so we put Magento 2 in, which is not a small task, and we migrated to Magento 2. And even though we were probably a little small for it at the time, absolutely the best thing to do because we have grown into it and we are set and we've done that we've done it we don't have to think about it we're never going to do it again and and we can just scale from here so even some of that just more commercial thinking i think it's really helped and if you frame it as you get to kind of cut your teeth and make your mistakes on someone else's business is always a nice thing isn't it yeah, exactly. It does help. It does help a lot. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but for me, it was like I, for a long time, I was great at fighting process because I got so frustrated by process. So I was always fighting against the process and the rigmarole and things like that. But then when I started my own business, I realized how important process was that I implemented too much process and had to bring it back again. So yes. it's kind of like it's, it's the it's- balance between the two worlds. It, it totally is, isn't it? It's process is really important, but you can have efficient, nimble process. Yeah. And you do have to have a process, but it doesn't have to be laborious with 50,000 approvals. You do a thousand burpees before breakfast and bench press pallet racks for fun. But when it came to Black Friday, LSKD needed some spotting. Introducing the well-built Shopify Plus. LSKD re-platformed onto Shopify Plus between the 2019 and the 2020 Black Friday sales period to help them keep up with the huge growth and to automate processes throughout the business. The results were a PB. LSKD handled 50,000 orders, an 1,100% increase from the year prior, even serving 19,000 shoppers at the very same time. 
talk about some serious gains. Hoo-ha! To read more of LSKD's story and to see other case studies, visit the customer section on shopify.com.au forward slash plus. You can also hear the full LSKD story back on episode 76. You mentioned before about you're very generous with your time and your industry knowledge and you're on the advisory committees of the National Retail Association, Australia Post, NORA. In those conversations, can you take us behind the scenes? What is some of the like the hot topics that people are discussing and they need help with at the moment? (laughs) <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> ULDs. ULDs. <laughs> what are ULDs? Cages. Aussie Post cages. Oh, oh I didn't know it was yeah. a big topic. Oh, yeah, it's a massive topic. Oh, it's a nightmare for retail. We can never get enough. So, <laughs> and then you end up having to, you end up having to palatize. It's actually a really big challenge. And Aussie Post, poor, poor Aussie Post there, you know, they're just going into a, um, a five day of, of not picking up in, in Vic. Mm-hmm. But I totally understand that they have to do it because they're facing the pandemic like everyone else. And and actually five in those five days, two two of those days are not business days. So yeah, like it's three business you know, days. It's three business days, right? But yeah, it, this has been a problem for years. It's just getting enough cages because some retailers store them and then they get stuck in networks and we end up having to everyone ends up having to palletize orders but then because mm. they're palletized you can't double stack in, in the trucks so then the trucks aren't being efficient so <laughs> that's one but if anyone's associated with operations i'm probably not exactly what i'm talking about um that, that's a fairly big one. Oh, what else do we talk about oh i mean a big a big chat amongst everyone and it has been for the last year and a half is just covid and, and, and probably a big piece is forecasting mm-hmm. and the holy grail of where we're going to go next no one has a crystal ball. And um, how is this all going to look when we're all let out? Yep. <laughs> Online sales, suddenly going to plummet. Uh, in-store sales, suddenly going to increase. Or, or are people just going to be nervous about shopping in-store? Don't know. So, What's your um, gut feeling on what you're hearing and seeing? Do you feel, feel most retailers are optimistic or pessimistic? I think everyone's, I think because we've been so long into this, everyone's sort of just a bit realistic now. I thought you were going to say exhausted. Oh, I'm definitely exhausted. I think we're all pretty exhausted. But I I think also from everyone I've spoken to, people are kind of planning for any scenario and being cautious as well. And it's more difficult, I think, it's definitely more difficult for those with stores to some degree being online, you can scale up and down a little bit, a little bit easier. But when you've got stores, that's, that's more, that's more challenging. Yeah. But I think everyone's been quite realistic about it. I do think that what will happen is we'll just have a lot more people going towards the service industry and hospitality will suddenly take a great big hike. Mm. And yeah, I, I spoke to someone this morning actually, who's in the UK, but is Australian. They've booked their flights to come out here at Christmas I was like, oh, you're brave. Yeah. You're brave. <laughs> like, yeah. we don't even know if you can yet. But people are desperate to actually just get out and do something. So, you know, maybe retail sales will struggle a bit on the back of that. Not sure. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who can pick it? I remember at the end of 2020, there was a lot of like, who can forecast what 2021 sales will look like? Because we all felt oh. we were coming out of it and 2021 yeah. will be free. But how do you forecast against what 2020 was? And like, Ugh, now we've got to do the same again for 2022 because no one knows yeah. again. No one knows. No one knows. I, what, I mean, you, you, what do you think? What your, um, um, You've got your ear close to the ground? I feel like we've got two camps. I think you're two camps about people who have stores and who don't have stores. There's a huge divide yeah. between the two. There's also that divide between people who are trying to who had all systems and everything implemented before COVID hit and those who are playing catch up. Cause I think if you're trying to play catch up now, it's almost like trying to get your house renovated. Now there's a builder shortage. It's really yeah. hard to play catch up with both <laughs> talent and with partners oh. and everything like that. It's actually the worst time to be playing catch up. Yeah. And then those yeah, you're right. who were ahead of the game, like yourself, really reaping the benefits of it. And um, I don't think, 
I've heard so much talk of people looking for acquisition and investment, <gasps> e-commerce yeah. at the moment, than ever before. Is that is that e-commerce retailers looking to looking for investment or to be acquired, as opposed oh, to oh, but yeah, right, yeah, and also yeah. money wanting to invest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and looking like the amount of investment firms that I've seen, private equity firms, kind of spin up who are wanting to know who's mm. out there looking for money is incredible at the moment. And so many brands that we speak to are saying we're trying to get a team ready because in the next six months we're going to get acquired and we want all the pieces in place before oh, we wow. do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's really interesting times because you've also got to be really conscious about we are in, I'm not going to use that word, but we're, <laughs> we're, in, we're in strange times. Yes. We're in strange times. So if you've had a huge surge in sales, like, uh, uh, yeah, what's going to happen afterwards? Like, That's it. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, our sales have, in, have definitely increased, but it's not been like tenfold. Well, yeah, um, and yours wasn't just driven off the back of COVID, right? You had a lot correct, of elements correct. leading into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, it just, it gave us a, it was a, it was a, it was a nice little surf break that gave us a little bit of a ride, but that's, but that's about it. But all the elements are in place and it's just kind of, helped us catapult forward a little bit but i've seen some businesses where they've just gone from zero to woof, and with that comes so many challenges yeah yeah we were mm-hmm. um speaking to the guys from matt allen from tractor tractor ventures the other day um oh yeah who kate morris is involved with and they've got a really interesting model where they can help fund businesses uh without taking equity um essentially mm. having been through the process of acquisition and i'm sure there were many sleepless nights um (laughs) what advice would you give to others who are considering going down that path oh gosh yeah it's actually really tough to go through it and i think the biggest the biggest challenge is the emotional piece you're talking about your baby Mm. basically and people will ask you questions that might irk you (laughs) <laughs> and you have to, and, and people want to make a decision on your business within 15 minutes. That's the reality of it. They'll talk to you for 15 minutes, maybe half an hour, and they'll ask you some very pointed questions. And you're there going, I disagree. In your mind, you're going, I disagree, I disagree. But that's, um, but they, they have hundreds and hundreds of acquisitions that they're looking at every, every month, every year. So they don't have time. To, to really spend a lot of time. So, so my advice is try and, if you can, try and take the emotion out of it. I would also say try and be very, for your own mental state, just keep going with running your business. Also, j- just almost just have it as, yeah, that's happening at the side. But, and that's the one thing we did. We just went, yep, yep, it's happening, but just keep going. Mm. Because you can get caught up in the process quite a lot. And I know lots of other people have been in this exact same position because you know, it's like, right, we're going to put the IM out. And that's exciting. You, you, you know, go, oh, we get the flyer out. Oh, these people want to read the IM. Oh, that's amazing. And you kind of get ahead of yourself and you go, oh my God, I'm going to get like 20 offers. This is so exciting. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and you, you do, you get caught up in the whole process. And the reality is people have a nosy. People, there's lots of tire kickers, right? And they fall away for many, many, many reasons because they've got to do their own due diligence. And as, although you think your business is the best business in the world, it might just not meet their investment portfolio or they might just not see the growth in it that you do. So you have to be as much as you can try and not be too emotional about the whole thing. Treat it as a thing that's going on at the side, but do not stop. Do not stop running or growing your business in the hope that this happens. Keep going, keep going. If it happens, brilliant. That's great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Keep going. That's great. That's really, really nice advice. Do you remember, and you may not, um, do you remember any particular question or comment that you that really irked you that you went, oh, yeah. I just... <laughs> no, I do. I do. I do. And it did hurt me. So I was saying, uh, it, it was about, because obviously we're very ethically minded here. And it was, someone was just talking about, I think they said, oh, this vegan thing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, here we go. I just don't see, I just don't see it being scalable or growing or, you know, and it, and it did it. Hurt me. So that was the, I'm not, I've probably got the question, you know, yeah, it was there yeah, or thereabouts, yeah. but they did, they couldn't see the scale and it did hurt me because I'm there going, uh-huh. hang on a minute. Australia is the fastest growing market for veganism in the world. More search 
just per capita here than anywhere else, yeah. it's growing. Like, yeah, I don't think I'd be able to hold my tongue. I'd be like, no, okay, well, I, why, why, why are we having this meeting? I'd, I'd be out. <laughs> yeah, I was, there was a lot of heavy breathing and humping from me, I think, <laughs> through that. Because this was all over Zoom as well, right? So I'm like, um, and, it's, and it's that kind of stuff. And you just go, well, uh, you've not done your own research. And, and actually, throughout it, because, because we were in the position where we're going, we love FNF. So we weren't in the position. I know lots of people who they want to sell because they're desperate to get out. We weren't in that position. We just wanted help to get us to the next stage. And so actually, that's probably one thing I would say. If you're looking for, for funding, do it when you're in love with your business because it puts you in a very different mindset as well. Because I was looking at all, when, when I was going through all of the, um, the meetings, I, I went in it into it going, no, this is much about can I work with you? Because I only want to work with people who I think I can work with. So I think also don't wait until you just go, I've had enough, I want to get out. Because it puts you in a different mindset. And go into it thinking, no, 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 this is a two-way two way street. It's mm-hmm. anyone I ever interview, I always give them a, lots of opportunity and blurb about Flora and Fauna or Norwich Life now because it has to be a partnership. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose it opens up many more options for you too, is that you wouldn't have thought that at the end of an acquisition, you'd come out managing two brands. (laughs) No, exactly. I didn't think I'd double my workload, which I didn't think could be doubled, (laughs) but apparently it could. (laughs) <laughs> that's great oh julie we have yeah. covered about a third of the topics that i would have loved to have copied oh, covered, but it's been so <laughs> awesome talking to you i better let you go and get back to that double workload before yeah. we do can you give us any hints at what's next for yourself flora and fauna or bwx oh yeah gosh okay so f and f what have we got going on well we launched this very cool ambassador program, which I'm very excited about where we're leveraging our community. We also might have a brand campaign coming up, nice. which is really cool, which is really, really cool. So that's, um, yes, yeah, so that will be coming up really soon, which I'm very excited about because we haven't done, we haven't done one of those at the scale before. So that's awesome. kind of neat for us. Um, I'll keep doing more of what I do. Uh, got a couple of cool investments. So now it's a nice position to be in where I can actually invest in some other ethical companies, which is nice and which is great for me. And it's kind of interesting for me as well. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just keeping doing more. I just love what I do and I'm not very good at not being busy. So <laughs> I'll keep doing more. That's so <laughs> exciting for our industry to have people like yourself, people like Kate, Nick at Afterpay is like, you guys have been so successful and so deservedly so and been rewarded for it. But it's not like you're going, all right, cool, I'm um, moving to Hawaii. It's like you, <laughs> there's so much reinvestment and support back into the community to help others tread the path 100%. as well. Mm. 100%. I think it's – I'm someone who's not bothered about stuff. I don't – I mean, I'm sitting here in shorts that should have gone and been about three years ago. <laughs> Even my mother-in-law said to me, what are you wearing? I went, they're fine. It's been a bit of <laughs> – just need to be sewed up a bit here and there, but I live in the country. Come on, I live in the country. Who cares, right? So I'm not. I'm not fussed about stuff. Stuff doesn't make me happy at all. Family, friends, delivering stuff makes me happy. Making a change makes me happy. So being able to help others and get behind really great businesses doing good things is exciting for me, and and being able to add whatever value I can add, if I can, to, to that as well. I think I think that's a good position to be in too. So, yeah. That's awesome. Now, Julie, if anyone's heard this and they go, I've got to get in touch, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Or um, probably don't, don't Instagram message me. I never look at them. I look at them about every three months. I don't, I don't bother with that. LinkedIn is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. Of course, come and look at florafauna.com.au and nourishlife.com.au. Um, come and look at those websites and contact us via Facebook and Insta and all that kind of good stuff. But if you want to get in touch with me, LinkedIn's the best way. That, that's where I'm mostly active. Beauty. Thank you so much, Julie. Really appreciate you um, sharing your story and what's coming up. <gasps> Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Nathan. It's uh, really good. <laughs> I honestly didn't want that conversation to end. I felt like we could have talked 
for ages. And in true Julie style, she was more than happy to continue past our one-hour recording slot, but I didn't think it would be fair given how much she's got on her plate at the moment. Now, there were so many broad business and personal lessons in there and many that I will take with me, but here are my top three practical takeaways. Number one, respect your words. Julie says how you talk to customers can make or break you. And indirect communication, especially online, can be interpreted in so many ways and potentially undo all that beautiful brand building work that you have done over the years. If you feel that your copy isn't landing right with your customers, it might be time to step in like Julie has and review all communications and ensure that they align to your brand values. Number two, value every interaction. We heard from Julie about the conversation that helped shape the flora and fauna values. While everyone else was busy on the skewies at a a big event, Julie beelined it for the most interesting person in the room, struck up a conversation, and what that conversation turned into the values for flora and fauna. Those little moments need to take advantage of whether you're a founder or you're just looking for inspiration in e-commerce make the most of those moments. Number three, do you know consumer law? This was Julie's big bugbear. More specifically, do you know what is required to advertise something as a recommended retail price, a regular price or a discounted price? It's not always as simple as it seems. Make sure you check out the ACCC's price displays page. That's the ACCC's price displays page for a really quick refresher which outlines what you need to do around those pricing to make sure that it holds up for consumer law. Well worth the refresh. To finish up, I have three resources for you. Firstly, if you're a first-time listener of Add to Cart and you want to stay up to date with new episodes, head over to addtocart.com.au and you can sign up for our weekly newsletter. We'll let you know every time a new episode drops as well as giving you my three takeaways from each episode and a link to the transcripts so you can know that this is an episode that you want to dive straight into. Secondly, if you want a weekly roundup of the best e-commerce case studies, tools, and research, sign up to the High Five Friday newsletter, which is delivered to inboxes at 8 a.m. every Friday morning. I read all the e-commerce news and send you the bits that I think you can take action from. Sign up at 12high12high.com.au forward slash high five. And the last thing, if you are looking to explore your next e-commerce opportunity, head over to esuitetalent.com.au. We are a dedicated e-commerce talent agency connecting the best e-commerce talent with the fastest growing brands. Check it out, sign up to the email and get in touch with me if you want to discuss your next move. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep those customers adding to cart.